what questions would you ask if you could sit down and talk to a Navy fighter pilot or an astronaut? If you had the chance to visit with a Navy fighter pilot who is also an astronaut, what questions would you ask? We had that opportunity to do that and ask some questions. In fact, he took us flying in his airplane with him, which was way cool. But remember, if you're a boy growing up without your dad, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Now let's go in and look at some of the questions that we asked our fighter pilot astronaut friend. Stepsons, I am so excited for this video today. We are here with Kent Rominger, who is a former NASA astronaut, a former Navy fighter pilot, and he is going to take us on a flight today. So get ready for the questions we're going to ask him, and let's go for a ride. Stepsons, I got to know Kent Rominger back when he was my boss's boss, where I worked a couple of years ago. He was and is a vice president for a company that makes rocket motors. Just kind of get it out of your way. Right here. Okay. We're all locked in. Clear. Ken has flown a total of five space shuttle missions and he actually holds the record for astronauts for time in flight in the space shuttle. He has spent over 67 days in space. I asked Kent what it was like flying into space, and particularly I tried to ask him the questions that I thought you, teenage boys growing up without your dads, might be most curious about. And one of them was, what was the scariest part about going into space? And his answer was kind of interesting. So, flying into space isn't scary. I mean, it's exciting, it's fun. You do know things could go bad. But, you know, on a, on a rocket, if things go bad, what's going to happen so quickly, it's probably not even going to hurt. Right? You're not going to feel <laughs> the. Uh, so, it was more of a, just a, a really exciting experience. And launching from the launch pad is just thrilling. Eight and a half minutes. It's like an eight and a half minute amusement park ride where you're accelerating up to three G's. You go up to 17,000 miles an hour. And then the engines shut off like that. And you're immediately floating. And floating is free fall. And so free fall, if you've jumped, ever jumped off a high diving board or a diving board or you know cliffs into a lake, that's free fall. So you go from weighing three times what you should normally do. You know, so in my case, I was up around 600 pounds of weight to zero, like you're just stepping off that diving board and in the free fall. And that was a really thrilling experience, you know. As a matter of fact, I even twirled my arms, which is what, you, what I do when I jump off the cliffs at Lake Powell, uh -huh. right? Because it's stabilizing, right? It's a gyroscopic stabilizing. I, I didn't knowingly know that, but in fact it is. Uh -huh. So I did that in space the first time the engine shut off because it was such a surprise. for the flight, Kent explained a few things to me. So, on airplanes, you always let the engines get nice and warm. When Kent told us, we put our headsets on so that we could hear each other without the background noise. Unfortunately, I didn't have a way to record audio of our conversation. We taxied out to the runway, and waited, and eventually, we were given clearance to take off. We accelerated down the runway, and in just a minute, we were airborne. Before Kent was an astronaut, he was a fighter pilot in the U.S. Navy. 
As a fighter pilot, he actually clocked over 685 carrier landings. And that happened to be his answer when I asked what was some of the scariest things that he ever did. So the scariest thing I've ever done in my life, by far, is land on the aircraft carrier at night. Because uh -huh. at night you have very little visual reference of any. It, all, the, all the thing you have to look at of the ship, and it can be kind of in a list, and so you just tend to match your wings with the list, and now the ship starts drifting over there. And anyway, it, it's very easy to get disoriented, and that's terrifying. Landing on the ship during the day is just fun, just sheer fun, right? It's like acceleration, getting catapulted off the aircraft carrier, you know, in a matter of three seconds, you're going 200 miles an hour with that assist. You know, you're full afterburner, but believe me, the catapult will make you fly, even if your engines aren't. But yeah, by far. And my first time I landed the space shuttle, I'd never flown it. It was at night, and I landed it at, at night, and it was fun. I wasn't scared. I wasn't even nervous. Uh, every one of my night landings was terrifying. So, yeah, landing on an aircraft carrier at night was a terrifying experience. I've never experienced fear like that, like, doing anything else. How many times did you do that? So I have 685 aircraft carrier landings, of which probably 250. Wow. Every one of them, right? When my heart was racing, I was nervous, scared to death. Did things get easier after or not? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I flew in a war. I flew in Desert Storm. I was on the USS Nimitz uh, flying up over Iraq. And, and trust me, I was the most nervous coming back aboard the ship than I was flying up by a during the during conflict. Wow. wow. Speaking of scary things, while we were up flying, Kent asked me if I had ever flown before. And then he switched the yoke over to my half of the plane and let me fly the plane. For my camera crew sons, that was the scariest part of the flight for them. Kent talked about how terrifying it was to land a plane on an aircraft carrier at night. In the description of this video, I'm going to include a link to a short video that shows you what he was going through as a pilot landing a plane on a carrier at night. Make sure you check that out to see what it was he was going through. I let a teenage son of mine give me one question to ask Kent and here is that question and his response so as a as a space shuttle astronaut having been in space what would you say to the flat earthers I would say hey earth is an awesome place right and uh, I would love to go to the moon because on the moon you weigh one-sixth of what you do here so I could probably jump 25 feet in the air I was never a gymnast, but I bet I could do a couple of backflips. Uh, I would love to go to Mars. Mars, you know, with the kind of propulsion we will head to Mars with initially, it's going to take you about eight months to get there. You'll likely stay about that same amount of time. Because you literally wait for the planets to align, the stars to align, to make a trip to only eight months to come back home. So anyway, that's, that's at least a two-year journey. And uh, when you look at the Earth compared to every other planet in our solar system, it's by far the most beautiful place. So, if anything, I really appreciate the Earth because it's gorgeous. The blues, the whites, the browns, the greens that you see from space. Any other planet, you're not going to see all those colors. Right? So, anyway, so the flat Earthers are going, I love them. Hey, this is the best place. This is the best planet I know. Right? But, it's, but it is round, right? It is. So, so you've seen that firsthand. <laughs> so yeah, but that's that's why we orbit it, right? If it was a flat, you wouldn't orbit it. You would just parallel it all the time. Uh, so yeah, all right. I was trying to be non-controversial. Non yeah, no, no, that's okay. That's all right. As our flight was coming to a close, it gave me the chance to ask Kent the main question that I really wanted to share with you guys, and that is, what advice does he have for you growing up today? So these videos are for boys that are growing up, especially boys that are growing up without a dad in their lives. What advice would you have for a boy in that situation or any teenager growing up today? Yeah, yeah. so my advice is find something you like to do. Figure it out is what you like to do. We all like to do different things, right? 
Somebody may like, you know, mowing lawns. Somebody may like riding dirt bikes or, or something. It may be reading, maybe learning about something. What, whatever it is. Maybe playing baseball, basketball. Figure out what it is you like to do and then do it. Work hard. Really apply yourself to do it the best you can. And whether your buddies do it better than you do or worse than you do, that's not relevant. What's really important is how you feel about yourself. And which brings me to another point, because I've been thinking about this question, right? And the one thing that results in happiness for us as human beings is us feeling good about ourselves. And the thing that makes humans feel good about themselves is giving. It's giving efforts, it's helping, it can be helping others, but applying yourself to do something or helping people out, but but just apply yourself, find something you like, and then by giving and helping others, that always makes you feel good. And if you feel good about yourself, you'll be happy and you will be a better person and you'll be much happier. And you don't have to be a Navy fighter pilot or an astronaut to feel good about yourself. Not at all, not at all. I mean, so, <laughs> yeah. You know, I did that because I love going fast, right? I, I love to go fast. I love acceleration. That's what drove me to do that. I worked really hard. I had a lot of setbacks where I do stupid things and get smacked around because I didn't do the things well. So I would try to learn and try to do things better. Do you ever uh, feel like giving up? Absolutely. Uh, several times I've thought about giving up. And, and I didn't. I always, I always knew, you know, if I give up, then I will get down on myself. And I know I really don't want to get down on myself. So even though sometimes it was really painful to not give up, I, I didn't step away. As our time and our flight with Kent came to a close, I hope you'll remember the words of wisdom that he shared with you, that you'll pick something that you want to develop yourself at and practice it, apply yourself and get better at it. And also, the key to happiness that he shared is actually serving others. And when you serve others, you'll feel better about yourself and then you'll do better. Don't forget those lessons. In fact, decide what you can do today to get better at and who you can serve today and then go do it. Kent, thank you so much for uh, for taking us on the flight. Now we can say we've flown with an astronaut, and all of you guys <laughs> can say that you've vicariously flown with an astronaut too. And uh, appreciate you being the example of doing exactly what you're saying, is giving and, uh, and allowing us to do this too. So thank you very much. Hey, my pleasure. Good luck, guys, and have fun. Right? It's important to have fun. Yeah. What about sunglasses on or off? Clear? Normally it starts. Now I gotta remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> remember, if you are a teenager growing up without your dad in your life and you would like someone to ask questions to, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and leave your comments so that we can make videos about those. And like the jets flying over that you can't see that are making noise for this video. Because then you can like and subscribe this channel and maybe one day you'll be flying in one of those.